<sighs> Hello. How's it going? I'm just here in New York City sweating, baby. It is hot today, but we're out here to give you a quick little history lesson. Today is pretty topical as we are shooting this in June uh, 2022, the year of our Lord. Uh, I don't even know what that means. Uh, anyways, we're here in uh, Greenwich Village. We are at the Stonewall Inn. We're gonna tell you guys the history of the Stonewall riots and pride generally, uh, because this is Pride Month. Uh, but before we do that, Eric, how the hell are you? Doing good. Yeah? Uh, I think so. Good. You Are you warm? You're wearing all black. Just having a happy Pride Month over here. Yeah, just you're living it up. Uh, well, anyways, uh, we're going we're gonna to cover all that stuff before we get into everything. By the way, this is super important history, guys, by the way. I mean, the Pride movement, the gay liberation movement pretty much started right in this spot. So whatever your orientation, whatever your background, whatever you are in the world, uh, this is kind of, you know, where it all started. This is kind of what New York stands for generally. So uh, this is pretty good history to know. Before we get into all that, Eric, you know where I'm going? No, where are we going? We're going to the Patreon plug, baby. Oh Guys, check out the Patreon, please. It helps all this stuff, helps fund these things, helps improve these things. Want to keep growing, want to keep me uh, free of the shackles of having to hawk, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, orthopedic shoes. What are influencers, influencers hawking these days? I don't know. But also, uh, please like the video, give it a little thumbs up, subscribe. If you've seen more than one of these videos, please just subscribe. Uh, but that's pretty much it, right, Eric? Yeah, I what mean, all these flags aren't free. All these flags, exactly. Uh, these colors don't run. Uh, sure. I don't know if that applies here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Eric? Should we just start this thing? This is a great history. I'm super excited. This is going to be really cool. A lot of people may not know the history of this, uh, but uh, but once you know it, you ain't ever going to forget it, baby. Especially when you got me telling it to you. I'm just rambling now. All right, let's get started. All right, we're here at our first stop. We're at the corner of Waverly Place and West 10th. And I'm here to talk to you guys about the events and the time period leading up to the Stonewall Riots. Now, the Stonewall uh, Rebellion wasn't the first time that gay people had fought for their rights. In fact, there were groups fighting for, you know, gay rights for a very long time. In fact, the first official one was credited with being started in Europe in 1897, then the one in the United States in 1924. And then in fact, in post-World War II America, United States, uh, a bunch were started, a few were started, because, uh, you know, the Red Scare. And people thought being gay was tied to being communist, uh, which is kind of weird. So you had different ones started back then. Now, keep in mind that around this time in the 50s and 60s, most states had laws against being gay. So uh, it was literally against the law. And here in New York, where you think it's like this liberal bastion, they actually had laws as well. So for example, there was a rule that the police used to harass gay people called the three article rule, uh, where you had to be wearing at least three articles of gender appropriate clothing or you could be arrested. So they would use this to harass, uh, you know, both uh, gay men and lesbians all over the city. Uh, pretty insane. And this is in New York City. They don't have so, this rule in downtown Brooklyn, do they? No, they clearly don't. Uh, and you know, it's, it's also too, because of they were on the fringes, the only people who would ever really, I guess, deal with the gay people and bars were the mob. The mob actually owned a lot of these bars, including Stonewall, which we'll talk about in a bit. Now, leading up to this, you had certain groups that had been uh, started in the 50s and 60s. So groups like uh, the Daughters of Belitis and also uh, the Mattachine Society which was started to, to push for gay rights, usually in a political way. Um, and in fact, here we chose the spot because this is Julius's. This was a bar uh, for a long time. Since the 1800s, there had been a bar on this corner. Since the 1930s, there was a place called Julius's. It wasn't a gay bar back then. In fact, on uh, April 21st, 1966, three gay men came here with reporters and photographers and witnesses in tow to sit at the bar and be rejected from having a drink because they were gay. They sat down and they said, hey, we want a drink, and by the way, we're gay. And the bartender was like, mm, no. So he covered the, there's actually a photo of him covering the cups, and uh, a whole thing ensued to bring awareness, to start fighting in court, and all that. Uh, it was a big deal, they called it the sip-in, which sounds pretty benign, if you don't think about the, the actual, uh, you know, bigotry behind it, which is a little, which is a little bit uh, darker. Uh, but it all happened here in, uh, on April 21st, 1966. So this is all paving the way for the more, I guess, 
uh, angry and, uh, and, and more uh, demanding outburst that became the Stonewall Riots in 1969. Uh, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, but this is Julius's. Did you know this was here, Eric? Yeah, it looks pretty friendly today. It is, and that, that's, I guess, the ultimate irony. You have a bar that didn't serve gay people, is now a gay bar. Kind of, I guess you don't get much more ironic than that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how, uh, how the times can change, but they don't change for free, baby. You gotta fight for your rights in this world, huh? And, uh, you know, I guess this is a good way to lead us into the next stop. What do you think, Eric? All right, let's go. Let's go to the next stop. All right, so I'm just here, loose, hanging out on a pole, you know? because I'm so comfortable here on Christopher Street uh, and Grove, actually, nestled in between a, a dispensary where Edgar Allan Poe was treated for a cold and a little dog pet store is Stonewall Inn. This is it. This is it. The, uh, the place where it all started. This wasn't the first time that gay people fought back for their rights, but it was kind of a break from the tradition. And I'll tell you what happened. So June 28th, 1969, in the wee hours, uh, the police come here, a couple handfuls, like nine police officers come to raid the place, like they always did. They raided gay establishments. Now, they'd actually just raided this place a few days before, believe it or not. Now, this place, Stonewall Inn, was actually owned by the mob. It was owned by the Genovese crime family. Uh, a man named Fat Tony Loria was in charge of this place. Uh, Fat Tony, that was his nickname. That's a pretty unflattering nickname. I imagine if I had a mob nickname, it'd be something like Nerdy Ass Tom Delgado. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it was going to be unflattering. What would your, what would your uh, mob nickname be, Eric? Um, the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper, Eric. Because yeah. uh, he wears all black. Uh, yeah. Anyways, we're out here in front. Um, you, know, the, you know, there's plenty of places to walk. You don't have to walk right in front of the camera that's filming. But hey, you know, I guess I gotta, I guess I gotta have PAs for that, right, Eric? Yeah. I spoke too soon. Anyways, uh, yeah, it really is. We're at. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, wee hours of June 28, 1969. Remember, late 1960s, 1969. I mean, the 60s had seen political assassinations, riots, violence, Vietnam War. There was, there was a tension in the air. Wee hours. They come to raid the place, uh, and the nine people, the nine cops, go in they actually start arresting people. 13 people are arrested and they start bringing people out. But people are angry. It's a hot, hot night. So people start coming in. More people from the community start coming in. People go to uh, Washington Square, recruit more and more gay people from the community, more allies. They start gathering around. So people start gathering and they credit this woman, uh, this lesbian woman, Stormy Delarvier, with being the one who kind of catalyzed the rebellion and the and, and kind of escalated it when she was getting stuffed into a, a police car. They say she got hit with a baton, she was bleeding, she was protesting and fighting, and she's yelling at people around her, do something. What are you guys all just standing there? Do something. And people started throwing bottles, they started throwing, you know, coins, they started kind of really kind of rabble rousing. There's some, an SAT word for you, pretty good. Uh, and then more and more people from the neighborhood came. It, it kind of escalated more and more until they set fire to the bar. Uh, they set fire to the bar and people were barricaded inside. The fire was put out, obviously riot, police come. It's dispersed, but the, 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 uh, the, I guess, rebellion continued for a few more days. In fact, rain was one of the reasons why it finally stopped. And in attendance were various icons and, and leaders in this community who, who kept on fighting and kept on pushing for more rights afterwards. People like Marsha P. Johnson, people like Sylvia Rivera. I'll talk about them on the next stop. Uh, but it marked a break in tradition. It marked a break in like the, the I guess, the tradition of, of walking all over the gay community, of them just being a pushover, being hidden in the darkness, on the fringes of society, and it kind of marked uh, the beginning of a demand for the rights. Because like I said, at Julius's, they'd always pushed for rights, politically or legally, but now it was like a demand for rights, which is kind of an interesting break. Um, and also keep in mind that the actual the actual riots were, were unique as well. I mean, they were doing kick lines in front of the police. Like actual, like, you know, like kicking line. Kick, can you see my legs, Eric? Sure. Kick lines, like they're doing like the kick lines in front of the police. This is amazing. It's pretty good. Great shoes too, by the way, huh? That is a new shoes. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, how you doing? All right, great. Anyways, uh, you know, hey, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> yeah. As soon as they see me doing a kick line, they're like, screw this guy. I'm just walking in front of his camera. But anyways, it was a really, really uh, very important moment, June 28, 1969, and the days that followed, and it happened right here, Stonewall Inn. And like I said before, this place was a dive bar. Uh, they watered down their drinks, didn't have running water. I know, 
It sounds like a contradiction, but uh, they didn't have clean water is the point. You had to bring your own beer. It was a bottle club. You had to sign in. Uh, you know, and everyone used aliases, obviously. Like I said, it was run by the mob, the Genovese crime family. In fact, Matty the Horse, Ionello, was the one above Fat Tony Loria. He was in charge of all the sex trade up at uh, Times Square. That was kind of his, uh, his, I guess, uh, specialty, uh, interestingly enough. But, and Genovese crime family, Lucky Luciano started that family in the 1930s. I digress, <laughs> okay? Uh, so it was a, kind of a, a, a dump. Uh, but maybe that's why it, 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 it kind of attracted people from all types from all walks of life, and it was just this collection of, of uh, you know, unique personalities and backgrounds, kind of the way New York is, which is kind of interesting, and that's what culminated and, you know, was the spark that lit the fuse on this kind of, uh, you know, powder keg that had been accumulating for, you know, I guess centuries, really. So, uh, pretty interesting. It all happened right here at Stonewall Inn. Now, we're going to go to the next spot, and I'm going to uh, talk to you guys about the uh, impact and the fallout from uh, this, this event. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Eric, should we uh, continue to move? I think we should continue to move. Before more people start just walking in front of the camera. Unbelievable, man. Very, what do you, very popular area. What do you have to do to get people to just kind of go around? It's not like, a, you know, all right, I digress. Maybe, maybe we should riot and demand our rights. All right, settle down. All right, sorry, that was too much. That was too much. All right, let's move to the next spot. So right after the riots concluded, different groups started to sprout up also fighting for gay rights that didn't exist before. So for example, the Gay Liberation Front was started by a, groups, a group of, uh, of different uh, members of the community, people like Marsha P. Johnson, who, by the way, is the first trans person to ever have a state park named after them in New York. Ah, over in Williamsburg, the Marsha P. Johnson State Park. Used to be the East River Park. Did you know that, Eric? I did not know that. Now you do, baby. All right, all right, we'll keep moving. She also started the Street Transvestites Action Revolutionaries with a friend of hers, Sylvia Rivera. Pretty cool. Lots of different groups just like that uh, started here in New York. Then the following year, on June 28, 1970, the Christopher Street Liberation Parade uh, takes place, which marks the first gay pride parade. It's held every last weekend in June ever since uh, because of the uh, Stonewall riots. And keep in mind that same model mimicked all around the world. June, Pride Month, end of June, parades, all to commemorate Stonewall riots. Pretty cool. Also, too, you had uh, this park become, in 2016, the first national monument dedicated to LGBTQ rights. Wow. The first gay monument in uh, United States history. So you got, you know, Mount Rushmore and the Christopher Park and uh, Stonewall Inn. Kind of cool. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure Mount Rushmore isn't gay. I don't know. Who knows what, what was going on with those presidents. But, you know, this was... Yeah, I'll save that for one of a conspiracy theory video, I guess. But uh, yeah, all of that happened because of the Stonewall riots right here. And it's important to note as well how persecuted this group was before uh, the, the riots. So for example, the, the DSM, the manual for psychology that lists psychological disorders used to list homosexuality as a psychological illness, as being mentally ill. And that had to change. And that was changed only because people claimed. And something, you know, basically it was a boiling over. It was a, you know, the, the time had come and it's important also to know that this didn't mark the solution to anything. This, this marked a, a, a fight, the beginning, if anything, of something, and that was the, the real fight and conversation around these uh, rights. A good example of this is Marsha P. Johnson actually was found in the early 90s in the Hudson River, uh, dead. And it was ruled a suicide, even though it obviously was not. Uh, there was a lot of evidence suggesting otherwise, but it was kind of just brushed under the rug. You know, you look to victories like Stonewall and the aftermath to kind of, you know, push you forward, you know? Um, all right, well, what do you think, Eric? Should we go and wrap this thing up? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, we've reached the end of the video. Look at that. We did it. Nice, quick, concise, tight. This is good. Eric, did you learn something? I learned a lot today. I don't know my history very well. Yeah, you really... you. You really, really dropped the ball on this one. This is a pretty important thing. Uh, but you know what? Now you know it. Now you're an expert in it. We covered everything, baby. We started, well, we briefly covered everything, all right? This isn't a college course either. So all you, you know, all you wannabe PhDs who are just going to jump into the comments and start mouthing off, keep that in mind. This is a brief thing, all right? You want some educational content? Go watch, I don't know, puppies making friends with cats or something, If that's, since that's so much better wow. on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, that's bitterness coming out. I don't know where that came from. 
I just want their views. Give me some number of views. I just want the views that, you know, the puppies get. More small puppies. Anyways, <laughs> we covered everything. We covered the beginning, well, like the lead up to Stonewall. We covered everything going on here in the city and in the gay community and their fight for rights. Leading up to Stonewall, we covered the, the events of June 28, 1969. And then we covered their aftermath. Pretty good little uh, introductory course. Call it, you know, uh, Stonewall Riots and Gay Rights 101. Uh, yeah, pretty good, right? Uh, what's, what's interesting about this is it doesn't matter what side you are on, what your sexual orientation is, what your race is, what your ethnicity is. It's stories like this in New York that kind of show you and inspire you that you gotta you gotta stand up for what you believe in. You gotta fight for what you want, what what uh, what is owed to you. You know your rights. And I think that's interesting. And I think what's cool about this too is this kind of a microcosm for New York. You had Stonewall Inn, which is this little divey little place that people from all over the world came seeking a, uh, a place for to let loose and be themselves and in the process you know something boils over and and there's just a point where things just can't continue the way they are and the result is an event like the stonewall riots and that result affects the entire world which i think is pretty cool <sighs> i got carried away there i think i almost I almost started tearing up it's pretty good that was all off the cuff this whole thing's off the cuff all right, sorry, I can't, I can't keep tooting my own horn, this is bad. Uh, all right, guys, well, that's the, uh, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. What do you think, Eric, should we, uh, should we call it? Maybe go on Patreon? Yeah. Did I not mention that already? Uh, I don't think you did. Oh, all right, well, yeah, go on, yeah. Check out the Patreon, guys. Check out the Patreon. Uh, that's how I fund these things. It, you know, it, it also keeps me from having a hawk, you know, diet Pepsi or something. You know, I have to drink a diet Pepsi or, I hate, I don't really drink soda, but Pepsi's the worst. Uh, uh, anyways, check it out. There's extras on there. There's all kinds of levels, and uh, you know, it's a real game changer, if you will. And uh, you know, some extras, yeah. oh, and they're you know mostly PG. Uh, also, too. Uh, uh, oh yeah, like it, subscribe, do that whole thing. That's a big help. If you watch more than one of these things, yeah, you, know, you know, suggest it to some friends. I don't know if you don't have any money, uh, do that whole thing. Sorry, I, I got. That was pretty good business pitch. Also, I'll explain. You can see why I'm why I'm making videos and not uh, you know selling toilets or something. I don't know what what do, what do salesmen mostly sell? I don't know. <laughs> toilets. <laughs> what globes? Encyclopedias. I'm not an encyclopedia salesman. All right. Well, anyways, now I'm really rambling. All right. Uh, what do you think, Eric? Should we uh, should we call it all over? It's, it's time to go. It's been time to go, frankly. Uh, all right. I gotta go edit this thing now, cause I. Because, uh, you know, still waiting for the Patreon to grow enough where I can hire an editor, baby. But, uh, all right, guys. See y'all later. Sick.